This video shows successful FACO in a 20-year-old youth with Marfan syndrome and subluxated cataract. The surgical plan is to perform a FACO aspiration after stabilizing the capsular back with capsular support devices and fixating the decentered back to the sclera using a Sioni ring before implanting the intraocular lens. A small fornix-based conjunctival flap is dissected at the area where we plan to fixate the Sioni's ring. A triangular scleral flap is raised with a crescent knife after outlining the flap margins with a BP knife. Through a superior paracentesis, a dispersive OVD is injected to tamponade the aphakic area and also deepen the anterior chamber. A supratemporal clear corneal incision is created. Rexis is initiated with a cystitome passed through the supratemporal clear corneal incision. It is continued further with a microrexis forceps which gives greater control than the cystitome. The anterior chamber is deepened with OVD whenever required. An intact capsulorexis is of utmost importance for the success of these challenging cases. A broken rexis margin is likely to limit the subsequent surgical options. Cortical cleaving hydrodissection is performed using Ekahoshi hydrodissection cannula. It is absolutely important for the lens matter to be totally loosened up. Some surgeons also recommend to dissect the entire lens matter into the anterior chamber before FACO aspiration. The capsular bag is then stabilized using iris hooks. There are many alternative devices to achieve the same. However, if properly handled, iris hooks do extremely well in these situations. The rexus margin need not be excessively stretched since the idea is just to stabilize the capsular bag when intercapsular FACO maneuvers are performed to remove the lens matter. The soft lens matter is removed by a bimanual irrigation aspiration system ensuring a steady anterior chamber depth and low fluidics. Before the irrigation handpiece is withdrawn, the anterior chamber is refilled with OVD. The handpieces are switched before removing the inferior cortex. Again, anterior chamber maintenance is of utmost importance. We decided to employ a Sioni's ring to fixate the subluxated capsular back to the sclera. A double arm nanoproline suture is passed through the eyelet of the Sioni's ring even before it is inserted into the eye. The clear corneal incision needs to be enlarged marginally for safe passage of the ring. The capsular bag is inflated and then the Sionis ring is manually implanted within the capsular bag. A bimanual technique is used to ensure that the trailing part of the Sionis ring goes into the bag. The inferior iris hook is relaxed for convenient manipulations of the ring in that zone. The Sionis ring is now aligned on the area of maximum subluxation. The two long straight needles will be passed using the railroad technique for subsequent scleral fixation. We have to ensure that the long needles do not take a bite through the roof or floor of the clear corneal incision. This is achieved by minimally separating the incision lips with the Sinsky hook before inserting each straight needle. 
It is only partially inserted and the tip will be docked to a 26 gauge bend needle to be subsequently inserted through the bed of the scleral flap. The same process is repeated and thereby two long straight needles are exteriorized. After proper centration of the Sione string, the two nanoproline suture strands are tied after cutting out the two long needles. The capsular back seems to be well centered with rexes becoming almost circular. A three-piece hydrophobic acrylic intraocular lens is implanted in the capsular back. Prior to this, the back and the anterior chamber should be deepened with a cohesive OVD. The trailing haptic is compressed into the bag. At the end of the procedure, the intraocular lens appears to be very well centered. The scleral flap and conjunctival flap are closed with 8-0 vicral sutures and the residual OVD is removed. The clear condyle incision is closed with a 9-0 nylon suture. The pupil is constricted with intracameral pilocarpin. This young man did extremely well in the post-operative period with well-centered intraocular lens and an uncorrected distance vision of 6x6.